Good morning, everyone. Yep, first day of school's over. They came home all excited <laughs> and seemed to have really nice teachers. <clears throat> uh, and I had a wonderful day. I had the little one here. My daughter asked us, could you take care of her for a couple hours? And uh, oh, what a joy that little one is. Oh my gosh, just, oh. Oh, oh. Mm. Thank you, Okay, so I saw something, and I have my last two days here, and then it's, yeah, over to my other daughters. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, my daughter came with a friend. Uh, they went together, they worked together, and they have, they have to get where they work, they have to get good boots, and so they, <laughs> so this is the second time they went boot hunting or something. <laughs> so after they left, I said, hey, are you guys going to keep having these boot hunting days? <laughs> They're like, oh. <laughs> I said, do, do, that's what I'm here for. Anyway, huh? it's important. It's important when you have good friends that you spend some time together with them. And for mothers especially, they got to have some time. Yeah, yes, without the children sometimes. Not saying, just saying. <laughs> and go and have a nice time for two or three hours. Yes, with one of their good friends. So, I am more than happy to be a part of that also. Huh? Husband and wife, they need some time together sometimes. Yes, where they can just, yeah, be a couple and all that. Go out and have a nice time. And um, anyway, that's what I'm here for as the grandma. I'm so happy I can do this for my children, my grandchildren. I'm just so happy I'm able to do that. And the friend said, we're talking about, you know, she comes, she says, wow, you have... Your own room and bathroom here, downstairs, with all the nice setup. And, and, uh, and then at and my other daughter's house, the little house, you know, which we, they, are, they finished everything up now. And, and uh, she says, wow, your children really love you. They really think highly of you and care about you. And it, <laughs> that's nice, right? Somebody sees Hopefully, my children will be a good example to other people out there, right? Yes, and how you treat your parents, truly treat your parents, yes? Okay. <coughs> <coughs> of course, here I am, almost 60 years old, okay, a few more months, and I oh, still get in trouble. It's like, it's, I can't, it's not big stuff, but it's just stuff I'm going to, so I made this jam, right, the, the peach jam. While no one was here except for my husband, it goes quick. Jam, you can make jam just like this, right? And, uh, and she had a few jars with lids, huh? those mason jars, and I used them all, four of them. And there was two little ones and two big ones. And I thought, I hope she's not going to need those. The whole two and a half months, almost three months that I've been here now, that's three months now that I've been here, Nobody, she didn't need them, not for one thing. Right? So I'm going, oh, I'll just use those. That'd, that'd be great. And then uh, I'll, I have plenty of jars at home, or my, my other daughter has plenty, so I'll replace them if she needs them later. Okay, if at, uh, at all, ever. And uh, what is going on with you? Why don't you just stay up the way I want you to? There. And uh, uh, she comes down last night. She says, Mom, just to, you know, not it's not a big thing, but... Where did, he, where did he, oh, so she mentioned, wait, 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 she, she mentions a couple of days ago, she says, and, and I made him birthday presents, remember, I said, told you, I put them in, first peaches from the farm, all organic, this, that, from our trees, blah, 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 blah right, yes, oh, made some jam, gave them a jar each for the birthday, okay, she says, yeah, I'm going to start the overnight oats, it's a big thing in, in my daughter's life, oh, okay, one, a, a big thing, they, they do it, both of them that, that I have here, 
Overnight oats, okay? Ugh, you couldn't get me to eat that. Ugh. Nope, oh, okay, I shouldn't say that. It's I, I, oatmeal. I, I can't eat oatmeal. <laughs> or even, it, yeah, it's gotten so far that it just, I can't, I don't, it just doesn't sit in my stomach, right? I don't know what it is about it, oats, but anyway, I can eat them in, a, in granola. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, that I can still do, or... A granola bar or something but not big fan of that either and well anyway <laughs> yeah. she says yeah I'm gonna start that overnight oats again I'm like, oh my gosh she's gonna need those jars darn it <laughs> but I didn't say anything so last night she comes and says mom not to, it's not it's not a big deal just just where did those jars go where did you put those and I've gone oh my god Gosh, I had to tell her that, you know, and you mentioned that a couple of days ago. I thought, oh my gosh, well, let's see. Maybe she'll forget again about her overnight oats, right? Which obviously she hasn't made in months and months, but now, right? And I thought, oh, here we go again. I used the jars and now, right? Yes. And, uh, and I said, honey, I use those to make jam. <laughs> And she's like, oh, okay. She said, no, no, it's not a big deal. I'll just get more, you know. But yeah, yeah. And I'm like, ugh, ah, here we go. And then I had to tell her, oh, that was, yeah. I said, I made those for you guys for her birthday. And she's like, oh. <laughs> here I am in trouble again. Okay, trouble. Is this trouble? Well, you know, ah. Uh, I have to say, I like, I really like, I would like my life to just, with my behavior, this, that, in a way that I am integrating myself in two families here, right? I want it to be perfect. I want it, I want everything to run really smooth. I don't want to interfere in their life of parenting or the children. And I want to just be a part of, right? And, uh, and... And so I'm really conscientious on how, how I voice myself over certain things or this or that, right? And wait for them to come to me to asking for advice. But then there's this other stuff, right? Yes. Uh, yesterday, <laughs> when the baby was here, I couldn't find her little pacifier. And I'm going, surely she did not do this to me, right? She, it's, it's an easy way to calm her down, uh, yes, uh, for just a moment, uh, especially after she just had a bottle, because she is so into, right, sucking, <laughs> and uh, I'm going, surely she did not, and so I dumped out the whole diaper bag, and sure enough, found one way somewhere, and, uh, and then I put everything back in, organized it, and, and in the evening, I got the, mom? I know you told me that you dumped up the whole diaper bag. Now everything is not in its place anymore, and I can't find right, one thing that she needed. And I'm going, it's on the outside pocket. And there it is. So it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. It's like one of these things where, where uh, yep, okay, one can't help it, right? Yes, that there are some things that just, well, if you want to be perfect, yes, still always things that come up you're going oh yeah <laughs> why did not work out the way I thought it was gonna work out yes <coughs> anyway yeah can one be perfect well why not I'm striving for it a hundred percent I think that's the best way to go I don't want to make excuses anymore for this or that and I don't know what I'm just not I want to be perfect in every which way I'd like to be that kind of example out there, right? Yeah, regardless of how people might want to laugh at me or, yeah, right, or you know, I'm still going to try. What's wrong with that? That's not to say. But, gosh, it's been like this all my life, since little on. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble, I just do. And in the way that I do get kind of into trouble is always by doing something for others, or this, or that, yeah, right, yes, okay, all right, interesting, I laugh at that myself, really, when it comes down to it, because I, I will, anyway, 
Uh, okay, all right, all right. Not going to get further into that. <laughs> I was laughing too. I know, all right. Uh, the trouble that will still come towards me because of who I am, what I do, what I say, what I'm involved in. You know? And I'm definitely not a quiet person, am I? <laughs> all right. I saw one that started out with that. I would like to start out with that one where Father said that a tree root can even penetrate a rock. And I'm going, no, it can't. Not unless it already has a crack. And then, yes, a teeny tiny root can absolutely grow through a rock. Right? Yes. But it has to already. If it's a solid rock, there's no way. How would I know that? I've lived in the mountains, was raised, born and raised in the mountains lived now for so many 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 years again in the mountains i'm enough around i'm around enough huge boulders and rocks and i don't know what to know that and and to see it and yes there are trees growing on top of boulders but they usually have a a, a, a foundation uh, either on the back or the front okay usually in the back right in the mountain where the roots can take a hold and then the roots of the tree grow around the boulder and if there are if it's a big enough one uh, then and there's many several trees they hold the boulder in place yes oh how would i know that because we've cut trees now, just recently a couple of years ago we cut the trees behind our barn because some of them were kind of dead but some of them weren't and it was uh, the the road was right above it and then there was the hill and we had a water outlet there uh, coming up had a pipe in the road and then the water comes out on the other side and ran down uh, to a little pool right, right behind the barn and and all, all, when it really 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 rains there's a lot of what it's like a huge waterfall and the trees held the rocks that were there, which were pretty big. Some of them were, you know, pretty big rocks. Held them in place when we cut, we cut those trees down. And a couple of live ones, just, ugh, okay, you know. And, uh, and I thought, I said, I have to think of it, that's not, that wasn't good. And sure enough, when we had all that rain a couple of years ago, where a lot of things got flooded in southeastern Kentucky, they came down. Now, they didn't cause any damage, they just fell down, but it broke part of the uh, hill away, right? the slope away, and the road is right above it. Yeah, what's that going to do in another 10, 20 years to the road? Mm. Right, the trees weren't there anymore to hold these rocks in place, and they fell. Uh, in the way that Father explains, uh, that, that, that love, love, uh, roots can penetrate through a, a, a rock, right? And love can penetrate through anything as well. Right? And I thought, well, from my experience, love will hold things in place. Right? Yes. And hold everyone together to, to a degree. And when love gets cut out of the equation, right? Yes, and me, me, other things suddenly become greater than love. That's plenty of stuff out there that suddenly becomes greater than actual love. Then, especially our own desires, then uh, love can't hold things together anymore. So that's one thing. So especially in a family, we have a good example. Your own family, that's what you love. That's the greatest love. But right? I start out with a little tiny baby. The relationship I have with my children, yes. This, that. Love, even if there are problems, will hold a family together. Because they are the most important people, should be the most important people in your life. Yes, it's not for everyone like that, I know. And when we suddenly give up on someone, say, forget it, it's not just not, you know, then, then 
what happens to family members? They fall away. They completely fall away. I just want to remind everyone, we're not going to be here all that long. We're going to be in eternity a whole lot longer in spirit world. Right? Yes? And here, to go through, even with family members that are difficult, just, oh my gosh, this, nah, I don't know what, and they cause some suffering, they cause uh, disunity, they cause just, why would you say that about me? What do you, let's just work together on this, and why? Yeah, yeah, to look better on the outside, who knows what, jealousy, I don't know what. Even if, we have family members like that in our family. We got to hold them with our roots of love. Yes, and never give up on them. I believe that love, true love, real love, sincere love, never gives up on anyone. And that's how I experience Heavenly Parent. That's what I have seen, learned, and experienced in my life when it comes to love. Because again, what is love? Hmm? What is love? That's, so I wanted to say something to that. And, and again, so what, I disagree with True Father? I don't disagree. I just give the example that I have experienced myself in life actually see. And I think that It's important for us to give our own experiences when it comes to things. It is possible. Is it possible to be perfect? Well, if we don't give it a try, <laughs> we'll never know. Right? True? Okay. Well, I wanted to start with that. So, no matter what, I do 100% agree with True Father that love, if it is not pulled back, cut off, will always triumph. Always. Regardless. Yeah. Okay. Which is, our Heavenly Parent will always triumph. Regardless. I think the billions plus Christians out there <laughs> with uh, Following Jesus proves that. They destroy, try to destroy, still do, try to destroy that love given to mankind every which way. Even killed them. Didn't work. Did it? Yeah. All right, we are in the first book of Maccabees 12. Jonathan's relations with Rome and Sparta. Oh, here we go now. When Jonathan saw the circumstances were working in his favor, he sent a select mission to Rome to confirm and renew his treaty of friendship with the Romans. He also sent letters to the same effect to the Spartans and to other places. The envoys made their way to Rome, entered the Senate and said, Jonathan the high priest and the Jewish, and the Jewish nation have sent us to renew your treaty of friendship and alliance with them as before. Oh yeah, because he had, uh, it wasn't Jonathan who did that, it was, it was Judas, his brother, who uh, became allies or set that in play. The Senate gave them letters to the authorities of each place to produce their safe conduct to Judea. The following is the copy of the letter Jonathan wrote to the Spartans. Spartans, Spartans, Spartans. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going to have some fun with these words. Oh, which brings me to something else. No, 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 no. Keep going. Jonathan, the high priest, the senate of the nation, the priests, and the rest of the Jewish people to the Spartans, their brothers, greetings. It sounds so funny. I'm, I know I'm saying this wrong. Spar sh Sparta, Sparta, Sparta. I'm saying it in Swiss. Spartans. I can't say it any other way. I don't know how to say it any other way. In the past, the letter was sent to Onias, the high priest, from Areos. Areos. Arayos, Arayos, one of your kings. Who the heck is that now? 
Onias. In the past, a letter was sent to Onias, the high priest, who is Onias, from Areos. And where is that? One of your kings. So the high priests now have become kings, are becoming kings, have become... Well, that's what it says here. In the past, a letter was sent to Onias, the high priest, from Areos, one of your kings. Jonathan is now king too, isn't he? Stating that you are indeed our brothers, as the copy subjoined attests. Onias received the envoy with honor and accepted the letter, in which a clear declaration was made of friendship and alliance. For our part, though, we have no need of these, having the consolation of the holy books in our possession. Well, who the heck? Oh, 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 this is Jonathan who wrote to the Spartans. Okay, now I'm getting. All right, all right, all right. Scratch the up before. All right, let's start this again. All right, so Jonathan wrote to the Spartans. Jonathan, the high priest, the senate of the nation, the priests and the rest of the Jewish people, to the Spartans, their brothers' greetings. Okay, man, how did I miss that? In the past, a letter was sent to Onias, the high priest from Ares, one of your kings, also a high priest. So I wonder what that meant there but with the Romans, what a high priest is. Obviously not the same as, okay. Well, because stating that you are indeed our brothers, as the copy subjoined attests, Onias received the envoy of honor and accepted the letter in which a clear declaration was made of friendship and alliance. For our part, though, we have no need of these, having the consolation of the holy books in our possession. We venture to send to renew a fraternal friendship with you so that we may not become strangers to you a long time having elapsed since you last wrote to us. So they don't need the alliance. They just want to renew friendship. Hmm, I wonder what that actually means. We, for our part, on every occasion, at our festivals and on other appointed days, unfailingly remember you in the sacrifices we offer and in our prayers as it is right and fitting to remember brothers. We rejoice in your renown. Flattery. Oh, my gosh. We are so... <laughs> Haven't heard a thing that they, that's, oh, we include the Romans, our allies, in our prayers and our festivals. Really? Usually, huh, you invite people over if they're so, hey, we're going to have this festival. If you want to come and be a part of it, we would love to have you here. Yet, I'm uh, just saying, eh, flattery. We ourselves, however, have had many trials and many wars, the neighboring kings making war on us. We were unwilling to trouble you or our other allies and friends during these wars, since we have the support of heaven to help us. Wow. Hmm. Thanks to which we have been delivered from our enemies, and they are the ones who have been brought low. We have therefore chosen Numenius, son of Antiochus, and Antipater, son of Jason, and sent them to the Romans to renew our former treaty of friendship and alliance. And we have ordered them also to visit you, to greet you, and deliver you this letter of ours concerning the renewal of our brotherhood. We shall be grateful for an answer to it. Well, then, if everything's going so well, this not, then why? Hmm. The following is the copy of the letter sent to Onias. Arius, king of the Spartans, to Onias, the high priest, greetings. It has been discovered in records regarding the Spartans and Jews that they are brothers and of the race of Abraham. Now, Jonathan is still the, the, the brother of, of uh, Judas. And they, they, they did, they warred together. They, okay, don't say that word, Daniel. And, and so, and the, the, this treaty, the you know, become allies, brothers, was made under Judas. So Jonathan was there. So how long ago could that have been after that? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Just saying. <laughs> it has been discovered that they are brothers and of the race of Abraham. The Spartans are the race of Abraham? How? Since when? 
Now that this has come to our knowledge, we shall be obliged if you will send us news of your welfare. Did they have anything to do with... Uh, now I wonder, because they had brought up uh, Esau, right, at one point, and on how Esau was the evil side, and so are the Spartans a part of Esau's descendants? Oh, interesting. I don't know how else would they be a part of the race of Abraham. Now that this has come to our knowledge, shall be obliged if you will send us news of your welfare. Our own message to you is this. Your flocks and your possessions are ours. And ours are yours. And we are instructing our envoys to give you a message to this effect. <coughs> okay. Jonathan, I'm not, I, Jonathan in Coeli, Syria, Simon in Philistia. Jonathan learned that Demetrius' generals had returned with a larger army than before to make war on him. I thought they were all, okay, you know what, Ugh, just, just read, Ugh, this doesn't make any sense. Again, it's this double talk going on. I, I'm not. It's all this double talk. It just say, gosh, we're in. We're in. Okay. He therefore left Jerusalem, and went to engage them in the area of Hamat, not giving them the time to invade his own territory. He sent spies into their camp, who told him on their return that the enemy were taking up positions for a night attack on the Jews. At sunset, Jonathan ordered his men to keep watch with their weapons at hand in readiness to fight at any time during the night, and posted advance guards all around the camp. On learning that Jonathan and his men were ready to fight, the enemy took fright and with quaking hearts lit fires in their bivouac and decamped. Jonathan and his men, watching the glow of the fires, were unaware of their withdrawal until morning. And although Jonathan pursued them, he failed to overtake them, for they had already crossed the river Eleutherus. Son Jonathan, so Jonathan wheeled round on the Arabs called Sabadians, beat them, and plundered them. What? Then breaking camp, he went to Damascus, thus crossing the whole province. Simon, meanwhile, had also set out and had penetrated as far as Ascalon and the neighboring towns. He then turned on Yopa and moved quickly to occupy it, for he had heard of their intention to hand over this strong point to the supporters of Demetrius. He stationed a garrison there to hold it. My goodness. So what, Jonathan couldn't fight one army? Because uh, they said, ugh, now let's just go. And then he turns around and he attacks another army or another place and plunders it and... What is this? This is, my gosh, bow your head in shame as an Israelite. Just saying. I mean, what is, hello? I mean, <laughs> double dog. Oh, this sounds, this is just horrible. Oh, yeah, and heaven is on their side to do all this. Mm-hmm. Wow, really? Not sure what kind of God they had. It ain't mine. And I don't think God changes. Okay? Just saying. <laughs> building work in Jerusalem. Jonathan, on his return, called a meeting of the elders of the people and decided with them to build fortresses in Judea and to heighten the walls of Jerusalem and erect a high barrier between the citadel and the city. Again. That to cut the former off from the city and isolate it. To prevent the occup occupants from buying or selling. So here, I have to ask, because we heard this now how many times that they were going to Fortify the, the, the wall around the citadel and I don't know what, da, 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 and got money for it, right? Remember that one king that said, hey, oh, okay, they didn't take it. Yet still, on how Judas, huh? now Jonathan, or even before, what happened to all that? We're just hearing about it, but it was never done, actually. So here now, they're doing it again? Or it was never done, so here they're doing it? Or just talking about it again? Yes, see, this is a weird, this is just weird, this is a weird read. If this were out as a novel or something, it 
fiction. It, it probably would not get very good reviews because of the absolute nonsense that seems to be coming out of these pages when it comes to make sense. I'm starting to believe that these are not all of what was written down, that we're only getting again what may sound as if God has the Israelites back. Just saying. It's very sad. This is sad, real sad to me to read this like this and really delving into it and going, oh my gosh, really? Hmm. Anyway. Rebuilding the city was a cooperative effort. Part of the wall over the eastern ravine had fallen down. Again, he restored the... How many times have they rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt and... Okay, what? God Almighty! The quarter called Japanata. Simon, meanwhile, rebuilt Adida in the lowlands, fortifying it and erecting gates with bolts. Somebody came up with gates with bolts. Wow, cool. Jonathan falls into the hands of his enemies. Trifa's ambition was to become king of Asia. Wait a minute. Wasn't he raising Antiochus? Assume the crown and overpower King Antiochus. Wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. That was not... Emaus was the one. Okay. Hmm. He was apprehensive that Jonathan might not allow him to do this <laughs> and might even make war on him. So he set out and came to Beth Sheen in the hopes of finding some pretext for having him arrested and put to death. Oh, Jonathan went out to intercept him with 40,000 picked men in battle order. Wow. <sighs> and arrived at Beth Sheen. When Trypha saw him there with a large force, he hesitated to make any move against him. He even received him with honor, commended him to all his friends, gave him presents, and ordered his friends and his troops to obey as they would himself. He said to Jonathan, we ha Why have you given all these people so much trouble when there is no threat of war between us? <laughs> Send them back home. Pick yourself a few men as your bodyguard and come with me to Ptolemais which I'm going to hand over to you with the other fortresses and the remaining troops and all the officials, after which I shall take the road for home. This was my purpose in coming here. Jonathan trusted him and did as he said. He dismissed his forces, who went back to Judea. <laughs> you know what came to my mind while I was reading this? I bet you all these people out there who make these, these old wars, you know, uh, uh, movies and about i've seen a few you know i mean uh all right it doesn't matter what which ones they were uh i wonder if they go and read the bible and say hey this is a good storyline right here let's do make a movie out of this oh my god <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> it reads like that with him he retained three thousand men of <laughs> three thousand bodyguards what? of whom he left 2,000 in Galilee, while 1,000 accompanied him. But as soon as Jonathan had entered Ptolemais, the people of Ptolemais close to the gate seized him and put all those who had entered with him to the sword. Trypho sent troops and cavalry into Galilee and the great plain to destroy all Jonathan's supporters. These concluding that he had been taken and had perished with his companions encouraged one another, marching with closed ranks and ready to give battle. And when their pursuers saw that they would fight for their lives, they turned back. Oh, wow. Lost their leader, but didn't give up. Okay. All reached Judea safe and sound. And there they lam lamented Jonathan and his companions. Being very frightened indeed, all Israel was plunged into mourning. The surrounding nations were all now looking for ways of destroying them. They have no leader. They said, no ally. We ha What about the Romans? What happened there? Uh-huh. Well, we don't need you. We have only to attack them now, and we shall blot out their very memory from all people. Hmm. 
Well, so I guess Jonathan got killed. I don't know. It doesn't say. That's the end of 12. Ah, yeah. In a way, you know, I, I see in how people are really interested in out there, or some, I don't know, is it the majority? I think the majority of people just goes, oh, God Almighty, what's the next thing that's going to come along that people are going to be all woo, woo, woo about, right? But I think it would be interesting to just have, even if it's just to, what, again, Everyone does all the thinking and the, and, the, and the making assumptions and decisions or whatever or the following on their own. And then you have, because really when it comes down to it, yes, of course on the internet, you're not, you, you, you watch a video or whatever and then you go and you comment on it. Right? And nobody is in a way talking back to you right then and there where you have to really kind of, yes, see uh, uh, another side uh, or listen to another side or you know, even be in agreement well if you're in agreement but to really properly kind of uh, hash out a, a topic or something is not really done because when you actually are kind of interested to talk to someone surely you sure enough you're coming around either and that happens to me quite often, a person that is so in the extreme of something that you're going, you're not making any sense. Stop. And they're not, they're, they're so, they're, it's like there's a block in there somewhere. And you're going, and you have to somehow try to give an example of, but this is not happening. Though one said it was going to happen. And they're still not, then they're just trying to find a way to still and kind of know it's oh yeah that's right i'm just saying and you can't have really a conversation with a person like that or then you have the opposition where now i have to look for a common denominator but then i'm not really able to really truly study and discuss something and say well let's get deeper down into it without our own already predisposed position of something I think it would really be really interesting if church communities would start taking this up and, and read through this and go, okay, what actually happened here? And what are we believing? And what are we just following, believing this is God's word, God's desire, God's ideal? And really take this apart. I think, I believe it's okay. Why am I doing this? For the reputation of God. What are these people doing to the reputation of our heavenly parent? To the creation? To mankind? And for what exactly? Hmm? I'm just asking. I think it'd be interesting to actually have some people, find people where you sit together and where you openly can say, hey, you think this is right? Doesn't this sound completely wrong? And why is it wrong? And then half other people say, yeah, but you know, and give their point of view or their thoughts to it, where then maybe we're going, oh, okay, that's, that's a good point. And then does it actually have hands and feet again? Or do we have to eventually come to the conclusion that who wrote this down? Who did this? And for what purpose? And what is that purpose today still used for? Hmm? Just say. All right. Uh, that's what I wanted to share this morning. I guess. Uh... Oh. 
It's going to be a beautiful day here. I still have <laughs> one day, right? <laughs> one day, two days since I uh, did some cleaning and stuff and, and yeah, had a nice ready. <laughs> hey, these children here are busy. <laughs> and when they're all together, they're busy. Yes, right? Uh huh. I thought yesterday I'd be tired coming home from school. No, mm -mm, no. First thing, okay, they were sitting, they were doing what? Uh, sitting in a chair? Okay, had a little bit of, but they're still young, right? And uh, came home, and the uh, first thing, uh, and uh, my grandson's friend was still here as well. Let's play baseball, and they, baseball, and they did. And a great time. Then uh, he went home, the friend went home, it was time. And they get here about 3.30 from school, and he goes home about 4.30. So they had an hour, and then we played ping pong <laughs> out on the, on the uh, driveway, uh, just with the on the ground, on the, you know, standing up just on the ground. And I had a great time with my grandson doing that for quite some time. <laughs> And, and I realized after it was, oh, and I'm suffering a little bit. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, they were just busy, 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 busy. Right after they got home and then down here as well. <laughs> so there's more cleaning that needs to be done. <laughs> Again, I would, ah, uh, I want to leave everything. When I leave, I want to leave everything perfect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to look as if there has never been anybody here <laughs> and no children were ever playing. That's how I'm going to leave this place. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be back again too. That's me. That's how I like things done. Yes. And out here as well, I've already cleaned everything. I've washed out everything. All I have to do is just sweep again. Yes, I gotta sweep again. <laughs> yeah. But everything's back in its place. Nicely taken care of. Cleaned up. Right? Yeah. Wonderful. Hmm. It's such an amazing summer. And love was a great, great, great part of it. Yes. Anywho. The embrace of our heavenly parent. Just willing to be a part of that. Yes. We learn how to do that ourselves as well. All right. May Heavenly Parent bless and protect you and grace you with love. And I will talk to you all tomorrow.